So nice. Hello, everybody. My name is Emily. I'm with Accelerate America. Thank you for joining us today. Hi, Esther. Oh, she's still connecting. Hello. We're going to start tiling up. Everyone's going to start expanding. <laughs> Oh, hi. Sorry. Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to change my name so we're not both. Lisa. Oh, me too. Okay. Thank okay. you. I know. Hi, Megan. Hi there. How are you? I'm well. Thank you. How are you? Doing good. Good. Um, oh, I got I to gotta keep admitting people now. Mothers are still trying to join the video and audio too. So we're just going to hang out here for a few minutes while we let everybody join. If you want to in the chat, you can say hello to us and your name, maybe name and where you're um, calling and video chatting in from today. And if there's some of you, we'd love to hear how many of you on your team are working from home right now. And see about that. I know we have some people that aren't on video, which is totally fine. But you can chat us. We're going to use the chat for questions as we go. <laughs> We've decided Zoom needs a like intro music portion. Oh, um, so that there's Ooh, a like little, that. you know, a little background music while you wait. I guess I could do it on my other computer as I start, but hey, we have Odessa from Greensboro working from home. Good. And Joni from Lansing. Hi, Joni. I'm a Michigan State alumni from Lansing. Um, thank you for joining us. Texas. Oh, hi, Erin. Working from home. Of course. I guess we should have, if you're not working from home, we'd love to see that too. <laughs> we can all, all be jealous to get to go into your office. My background says it all. <laughs> yes, it does. That's, that's the other advantage, right? Yes. Soon, someday when we're on these Zoom meetings, we're going to be like, now is she really on vacation or is that a background? We're not going to know. Now we know, right, that you're, <laughs> we know it's a background, but, but the other day Roy had a background, but it was him sailing. It was like a video and my kids were very confused. They truly thought he was out sailing. Hi, <laughs> uh, Paul. If you just joined, we are waiting a couple minutes. There's lots of people joining right now. If you want to go in the chat and tell us your name, where you're calling from, calling in, video chatting in from, and if you're working from home, and if so, how many employees on your team are working from home at this time? Curious. Let's see. We have, what, eight of us working from home. Some of us did already, but eight of us across Half of us are in Michigan and half of us are in California. So we kind of had that remote work going on even before all of this. Ooh, 17, Joni, and in, in Lansing, right? 17 working from home. <laughs> it's a big change. <laughs> Hi, Joyce, from the Blue Water Area Chamber in Port Huron, Michigan as well. Three employees all working from home. Okay. Michael is on. Okay, I think we'll just, oof. Four in their office, all working from home. Ooh, going back to the office Monday. It's gonna be an interesting transition too, right? To go back to <laughs> all being in the office together. Seven working from home, slowly drifting back in. Oh yeah, from the Lima Allen Chamber in Ohio. Slowly draft, drifting back in and Covering half days each. That's interesting. 
how people are going to start transitioning back, right? Like that. I've never even heard there's some schools talking about some things like that, like kind of like on and off days coming back. Sharon from the Lansing Board of Water and Light. Oh my, Michigan State. Oh my gosh, 500 employees working from home with the Lansing Board of Water and Light in Michigan. Whew, that's crazy. I hope Sharon has some questions or comments she can give us on how that's going. <laughs> uh, okay, let me, there's people here. Good. Jennifer and Michael are joining right now. I think we'll just give it another minute or so. Megan, there's like 12 people not on video and then us. So I think uh, most people are kind of slowly coming on board here. If you just joined, we're all chatting in the group chat, um, our names and where we're from and how many employees on our team are working from home right now. Um, so far, the Lansing Board of Water and Light wins with 500 employees working from home, Sharon. <laughs> 500 or five, it probably still feels like a lot of effort to transition. <laughs> all right. Cool. All right, well, for those of you, I know I've said it a couple times, but my name is Emily. I'm with Accelerate America. Thank you for joining us today for the Ultimate Work From Home Guide. We have Megan Wright here from Dell Technologies. Um, she's joining us today to talk about all of us transitioning. I know it's a big amount of you, <laughs> a lot going on these days. We're transitioning, working from home, and really some of us probably are gonna start transitioning into probably the new normal of some work from home, some not work from home. So Megan's gonna go through tips today on working from home and talk about some of the things that Dell's doing um, and can do to help you um, during these transitions and these kind of new normal times. So as we go, if you have questions for Megan, please put them in the chat. Um, I will be working with her to get those answered for you throughout the presentation. And then of course, after it's all over, I'm sure there'll be some questions then too that we will get to, um, but please ask questions. I know you're here because you have questions and <laughs> all the changes and everything going on. So please, we want this to be a discussion. So please put them in the chat. Um, and if you haven't yet, tell us where you're from, your name, and how many employees are working from home in the chat. Um, but I think I will let Megan get us started. I will give it over to her so she can start. Fantastic. Well, great to um, see all of you that are joining by video and everyone um, as well. You know, thank you so much for your time today. I will go ahead and uh, share what we have today um, to present on the, um, you know, guide to working from home as efficiently and effectively as possible, which I know we are all, uh, all feeling and experiencing right now. All right. So again, uh, a quick introduction on my end. So my name is Megan Wright. I um, have been with Dell for um, close to four years now, and I work with the strategic partnership team. So um, I am the dedicated point of contact between the partnership um, with Accelerate America and Dell Technologies. So if you do have any questions at the end of my presentation, whether it's directly um, of the topics that we discussed today or outside of that, just based on technology, uh, please keep me in mind and um, I'm happy to support you and answer any of those questions. Um, but the, the main topic that we wanted to discuss today was, like I mentioned, the ultimate work from home guide. Um, so, you know, we are now in about week eight or nine of quarantine, depending on um, your state's regulations. And so that sounds pretty crazy to say out loud. I think most, uh, it feels like you blinked and we're here um, or it went by extremely slow so depending on how you're feeling about that but um, you know we have some really great tips that Dell introduced to all of us as employees that we thought wow these would be fantastic to share with our members as well um, because everyone can you know take these foundational tips and apply them whether you are have been working from home for a while um, or are going to continue that kind of hybrid of working from home and in the office and so I'll just give you an idea of what all we'll kind of cover today. So we'll go over those top tips and tricks for a better remote experience and then also our work from home solutions 101. So if you've ever visited 
Dell.com or looking at technology solutions in general, there are a ton out there. So we're really here to, to be an advisor um, to make sure that, you know, you do have the best solutions that fit your business needs. Um, and every small business, entrepreneur, startup, it's all so different. Um, so we really have a lot of different options out there to pivot and work with exactly what you're, what you're needing. Um, and then we also have an example of a real-time uh, business case um, of a small business that we're actually helping right now that is experiencing some you know, constraints due to COVID. Uh, so this is overall what we'll be going over today and we'll go ahead and jump into the top tips. So, um, like I mentioned, it, this may be either a brand new reality for you. Um, you've maybe been extremely work-centric um, or office-centric for your type of business or your role within your company. So this could be absolutely brand new, or you may have been working from home or working remote 100% already. Um, that's actually my case. I have been working remote since March of last year. So um, at first this felt very business as usual, but um, as I'm sure everyone can understand, it, it can take some turns and, and feels a little bit different as these weeks have gone on. So what, whatever end of spectrum you are, if, uh, if you are used to working remote or if this is newer for you, these tips can kind of lay a really good foundation um, of what to kind of resort back to and um, build upon. And then especially if you're transitioning back into the office. So before I jump into those tips, I wanted to share um, kind of an interesting point of data that we found in um, a study. So in a study published in 2019, it was actually reported that only 3.6% of Americans worked full time from home. So um, some of you may be kind of widened your eyes a little bit, chuckled a little bit, or you know, it, it may be a shock because this seems so low, especially compared to what we're living in right now. And actually from a more recent study, um, it shows that 62% of employed Americans um, currently say that they're working from home at this time. So, and that number has actually doubled since March, and that was as of April. So, you know, that just goes to show that everyone is having to pivot and adjust and make this transition, whether it have been immediately um, eight, nine weeks ago, or if it's still in that transition period right now. And so our first overall tip is support your work style. So what this really boils down to is coming from whether you're in an office or um, running a storefront or whatever type of industry or focus that your business is, um, you know, you have a, a certain work style that you're so used to. That could mean you need a lot of space to take up on your desk for all of your different papers and reports and actual physical, you know, resources that you need from a daily basis, or you could have been extremely, um, fine with being isolated, a small space, that works great for you. Uh, you could have also really enjoyed being collaborative and working with your team members, your colleagues every single day and, you know, jumping in and out of meetings quite often. So this can be very affected by our current uh, climate at first. And so what we recommend is, is trying to uh, replicate and mimic as best as you can the work style that you had within your office or your place of work. Uh, so if you do need a lot of real estate for all of your different resources, try to find, you know, your dining room table, your kitchen table. It's kind of these times where you're having to get a little bit creative and really uh, source the, the right area for you to make this uh, work style uh, make sense for you. And um, if you were more isolated and, and really needed your own kind of space to focus and, and get the jobs and the tasks done that you needed to, make that happen as well. Uh, and this kind of sounds, you know, so obvious in a sense, but whenever we first all transition to work from home, you feel, you know, oh, wow, I can, I can maybe work from the sofa or work from bed or work from these different areas of the house that I can actually multitask and do a lot more things throughout the day. And I think what business owners and entrepreneurs are finding is um, sometimes those, those uh, areas cannot support the actual work that you need to get done efficiently and effectively. So definitely supporting your work style is going to be huge to lay that foundation. And so that brings us into something that's actually really closely tied to that, which is uh, creating a dedicated workspace. And so when we say that, again, it kind of goes along with the theme and the idea of replicating what you once had as best as you can within the new place of work, uh, whether that be home or wherever that may be. So um, 
kind of the top tips that we say to replicate this is try to choose a quiet spot, uh, free of distractions as much as possible, which that's probably much easier said than done, um, but somewhere that also has a really strong Wi-Fi connection. With a lot of the use cases of using these collaborative platforms like Zoom or Microsoft Teams or Skype, if you are trying to be collaborative and continue um, to have the same type of communication that you did every single day within your workplace and having that weaker Wi-Fi signal, dropping off the calls, it, it can become very frustrating. So we recommend um, trying to find that dedicated spot that makes the most sense. And then also trying to replicate your actual desk setup um, you know, you may have been coming from an area that had one or two multiple monitors and you had more screens to multitask through different applications, uh, which is a really big focus these days. So what we recommend, and we'll actually go through this uh, later in the presentation, we have some really great solutions that can, um, I can guarantee you can make all the difference in how you're working um, effectively and efficiently with these different accessories that you can add on to recreate this dedicated workspace. So work style, workspace, very similar, but uh, can kind of go hand in hand. And so what we also want to recommend as our third tip is uh, connecting with tech during social distancing. So this goes along with the idea of exactly what we're doing today. Uh, so having these Zoom meetings, having your platforms such as Zoom, Microsoft Teams, and Skype. There's a ton of others. Um, there are also actually a, a lot of options that are zero to low cost uh, that your small business uh, or your startup if you're an entrepreneur can utilize and use for your team to continue to keep that communication and that collaboration solid. And um, you know what it really boils down to also is not only are you utilizing these communicating platforms and collaborative platforms to um, connect with your employees or your employers or your colleagues, but it's also really important to use these platforms for your customers as well. So if you, you know, are a business, uh, you're still in business, you still have your services, your products, let your customers know that you're there for them as well. Utilize platforms such as Facebook Live and things of that nature that can, you know, give a shout out to your customers, let them know that you're, you're still here strong and um, you're still here to provide your services and your products to them as well, because I can guarantee that they are, you know, really wanting to hear from you. And that's also to say, you know, reaching out to your fellow colleagues and um, your friends and family just to check in on them. That's uh, been something very important to me and I've experienced myself is just um, you're so kind of bogged down with the work these days. It's, it's almost as if your workload has been heightened from uh, now working remote. And so having these check-ins uh, makes all the difference for your uh, customers and your, your colleagues and your employees as well. And it's actually a study shows that 94% of businesses have said that video conferencing actually increases productivity. And the interesting point with that is um, while in the office or in your workplace, in your store, um, in your business, you know, what we miss so much is that human interaction and those 10 minute conversations or 20 minute conversations or maybe turns into an hour long lunch. I miss that dearly and I know everyone else does too, um, but that can eat away at your productivity time throughout the day. So what's really great um, and, and kind of a, a benefit and silver lining of utilizing these other platforms is you can really schedule it out. You can really, um, you know, associate a certain amount of time to a certain meeting because I know we've all been there where that meeting probably could have been an email or something of that nature. So you have a lot more control um, in that as well. So going on from, you know, keeping in contact while socially distancing using those platforms, it uh, brings on to the closing applications for better bandwidth as our fourth tip. So this is huge right now, especially if you are, if you have kiddos at home that you are now teaching also. So your computer is not only meant for work, but it's also now meant to play, um, you know, Zoom calls with their teachers or interactive educational content, um, or maybe downloading streaming Netflix to play Dora the Explorer because you need five minutes to focus on something else. So, um, you know, what we find now is that with so many applications, so many different downloads and streaming content that you have open, it's easy to forget that that's actually bogging down your computer. 
And that really affects, even if you have a very high performing system with a lot of, you know, fantastic specs to back it up and, and inside the configuration of that system, even with all that being said, if you do have some of these, um, these applications open or the, the content open, it will bog down that system and move a lot slower and that can decrease your efficiency. And, um, you know, it actually, from what we've seen, it's uh, typically around 10 to 11 applications. On average, at the peak time of um, a workday is how many applications you have open. And that's pretty eye-opening. So whenever you are now working from home, it's great to just touch base, check in halfway throughout the day and close down what you don't need and keep up what you have priority for. So going into our fifth tip we recommend uh, taking real breaks. <laughs> you deserve it. So this is um, huge. We're finding that with working from home, you have the tendency to maybe start a little bit earlier or go a little bit later because it's so convenient and it's right there maybe in your next bedroom or downstairs. Uh, so you may be working a lot longer, which is fantastic, but it's also important to prioritize self-care and uh, making sure that you are taking a break to clear your head, go grab a, a sip of coffee or a whole cup of coffee <laughs> and walk your dog, um, you know, play a game with your kiddos. There's just so many things out there to just step away, clear your mind and uh, make sure that you're keeping yourself at the forefront. Um, and I really appreciate that this is something that Dell supports so heavily as an employee. It, it's something that can really make all the difference between your day because it can be 8 a.m. and then 5 p.m. like that. So this is extremely important. And going into our sixth tip, um, it kind of goes hand in hand also with, with taking those breaks. So balancing that work, um, you know, work from home lifestyle can be really tough. As I mentioned, you might be starting a lot earlier or ending your day a lot later. And so you have to set those boundaries as tough as that is. And, um, you know, with a lot of demand right now or what you're trying to accomplish um, from a business standpoint, those extra hours can be, can make all the difference um, within your business and it can, you know, really be beneficial, but there is still time that you have to, you know, take a step back for yourself um, and for you and your family and, and take that break and um, know when to shut down. So that's another highlight that we, you know, may sound so simple, but we love to call out uh, for our members. And lastly, um, is one of maybe the most important uh, points that we'd like to make as far as these seven tips for the, the best work from home practices, and that's making security an absolute priority. And I actually will will share a really great one pager with Emily and the Accelerate America team to send out to all the attendees today that has a little bit deeper dive into all of the different security best practices. Um, but just to, to call out a couple here, um, one of the, the number one things that you can do just to further increase your security and um, you know, and, and to that point, whenever we step outside of the four walls of that business that you were, you know, working within, it's easy to, to forget. It's easy to, um, you know, let, let your guard down a little bit. And these are just those simple reminders. So a VPN is going to be that first layer of action that we can recommend for security. And so if you've heard of VP, a VPN before, um, that is a, a virtual private network. And so what that truly does is it adds a layer of privacy uh, by creating a private network out of a public internet connection. And so uh, this will encrypt and secure your online actions and traffic um, and make it virtually um, untraceable in a sense. So a VPN is extremely important um, if you're working from home. And then also whenever you are transitioning back into the office or back into your workplace, this is something to think of for your employees to have a plan of attack for, you know, next time whenever we do want to have some employees work from home, some transitioning back into the office, having a VPN um, is really a great practice for whether you're in the office or not. So we, we highly recommend that. And then also we recommend making sure that you are working off of a secure Wi-Fi connection that does have a password to log into. That way these the hackers and um, all of these different threats, outsider threats, cannot detect or you know, get into your private data, your company data that is so important to you right now. And sadly, you know, during these times of crisis um, and, and during this pandemic, the hackers just don't care, um, unfortunately. And so we want to make sure that you feel confident and, and feel as prepared as possible 
um, with, with your work from home setup and then transitioning back into the office. And lastly, we also recommend making sure that from an endpoint, so device, um, every single device would have its own malware protection. And this is great um, just in case, you know, those, those additional inside threats and, and intruders cannot um, actually break into your system. And a really big thing is we found that 33% of small businesses do not actually train their employees on some of these hacking tactics, such as um, a really popular one right now, which is email phishing. So just to give a, a real life example at Dell Technologies, we actually um, are tested almost every single day or week um, as employees, we will be sent maybe a fake email that is a phishing ploy. And we, as employees, if we don't recognize that and we don't report it, if we actually click on it, click a link or anything of that nature, um, it sends us directly to a security training. So Dell takes it extremely serious. Um, and in every small business, every um, startup should as well, uh, because you know you are highly targeted. So um, I, for one, have never had to do that security training, <laughs> um, but that's because you know we, we've been trained and educated. And so that's so important. If you are a business owner um, or an Owner of a startup, it's so important to have this kind of idea of a plan of attack um, for you know this education piece on security with your employees. Very very important. I have a question, Megan, before you move on. So obviously, when this started, it, it seemed fairly temporary, and as the weeks have gone on, it's starting to feel a little bit more like per permanent or like something we need to deal with. So if an employee's hearing you now and thinking, "Yeah, I need to make security a priority," is there a way for them to purchase? You know malware and VPN and some of these security things and deploy it to their employees that are at home right now? Absolutely. So we have um, a team of small business advisors in Nashville, Tennessee and Round Rock, Texas, just outside of Austin that are there ready to assist you with anything from all of these types of solutions. So security specifically, we do have products that we can um, we can provide in malware as far as also providing VPN connection. We do have a company that is under our umbrella called RSA, which can provide all of the um, solutions as far as VPN connection. We also can go as far as also looking at your enterprise uh, setup within your business. So your servers and your firewalls that can also kind of act as that outer mm -hmm. layer of security to your business. So we really have the full portfolio and can really, um, you know, look at every single spectrum of the security uh, mm -hmm. that you're looking for in your business, Dell can provide. So it's not too late. Like everyone has their laptops at home, right? They can still right. do something for them. <laughs> okay. Right. It's not too late at all. Yeah. Yeah. You, can, you can implement security at any time okay. and obviously sooner the better, but we don't want, I don't want this to alarm everyone or, or scare everyone because it's something that everyone is having to deal with and, and focus on. Mm -hmm. And we have some really easy solutions. Um, it right. takes a simple conversation and, and we can knock it out for you. Thank you. Of course. So uh, just to, to wrap it up, I know um, that was a lot of different tips, but um, they all truly, again, will build that foundation. So just knowing your, your work style, recognizing that and building upon that with your dedicated workspace, making sure that you're staying collaborative and connected with your employees and your colleagues and your friends and family using those um, collaborative platforms. And then also letting your computer not be so bogged down with all of those different uh, streaming services and, and applications that you have open, making sure that you're giving yourself a, a break every once in a while and stepping away whenever you need to. And then finally, making sure that security is a priority. Uh, we found that these seven tips can really solidify um, the best you know, option to work from home efficiently. And, and while it's not the office or your workplace, it, it's gonna be close. <laughs> and so, um, from here, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and work into our work from home solutions 101. So as I mentioned, we do have a lot of different options whenever you do visit Dell.com um, or any technology solutions out there. So within that, we have quite a few different families of laptops and desktops I'm sure you've seen. And within that, we have some different configurations. So it can be quite overwhelming at times. Um, and, you know, whenever we're working through something like this, like COVID, um, it's very time sensitive. We saw a lot of small businesses and startups that where typically maybe they're planning a few months out for a refresh or a work from home 
style solution. And now, you know, we're needing to implement this in the next week or less than that. And so with that, um, you know, you don't have time to do a ton of research on the back end to try to make sure that you're spending and investing in the correct equipment for your business needs. So that's where we wanted to shed some light on that today, um, just kind of high level. And then of course, if you have any further questions or if you'd like a custom solution built up, we can take care of you on the back end if you'd like to share your contact information with Emily and, and she can get that over to me. But we'll go ahead and start with kind of the, the hot topic, which is laptops. So this is, you know, one of the, the best options when going remote or having this work from home setup is having a laptop because you are so mobile. But what we were finding is, you know, you are constrained by maybe the uh, monitor size and the screen size is not as collaborative or, or multitasking um, effective anymore. So I'll go into some accessories here in just a bit, but wanted to give a really clear vision on all of the different options that we have from a laptop standpoint, um, but really clear as far as what the roles of each of these laptops are. So within our Inspiron Online, which is on that far left side, uh, this is your consumer business grade hybrid. So this is the perfect solution if you're looking for a system that is going to be used for light business work, maybe four to six hours a day, but also second as a entertainment central for your kiddos or um, if you do have some older kids that are within your household that are needing to do some lecture work or any other type of education this is gonna be the perfect system for you. Um, we can uh, customize this option and we do have a lot of different sizes. So if you're looking for a 12 inch smaller option all the way up to a 17, um, we can really capture what you're looking for in the Inspiron line. And also we have some really great two in one options. So that's where the laptop would just completely fold over flat as a tablet and you can use it um, you know, in your transition from work to play in a sense. So that would be our Inspiron. And then on the Vostra side, which is the second um, option here, that is dedicated for small businesses. Uh, the, the, the system was built for small businesses in mind. And what that really means is if you are transitioning from a work from home situation that we're in right now and you will be going back into the office, but you want to have a flexible solution, then now you can teeter totter and, and go back and forth uh, and that be your new kind of way of work and your new work life. The Vostra is going to be a great option because it has a matte screen and uh, this is a um, something that you know, you don't always realize at first of why a laptop is business grade and the, the matte screen really makes all the difference because if you are going in and out of the fluorescent lighting, you won't have that glare from the glossy screen. It absorbs that light and it's a lot more sensitive on your eyes and a lot easier to utilize and, and see. So the Vostro is um, also extremely dependable and really can um, be pushed to the limits of a small business use case. And as far as going in from the Vostro, we'll next go into the Latitude. So our Latitude is viewed as our corporate workhorse system. So if you need something that's going to be on 10, 12 plus hours a day, this is the system for you. And um, similar to the Inspiron, this is the corporate grade where we can still customize really highly and they do have those size options. So if you are typically on the road or you're traveling for your you know, typical nine to five um, looking job, this is going to be a great system to transition back into the workforce because we can get a lighter size, which makes it a lot lighter for actually you know, carrying around and traveling with, but is also a really high powered system that can be customized to your needs and is great for both at home and in the office. And finally, that brings us over to our XPS. Um, so our XPS is really driven for the creatives. So if you do fall within a um, line of graphic intensive applications or you need a really high end um, resolution quality for your screen, even up to 4K, this is the system. So XPS is going to be perfect for that use case. It's extremely streamlined. We built this system to have, um, you know, really lightweight internal um, workings, and then also be very upgraded to where the screen is fit to edge. You're really maximizing all of your screen space because it is focused for those creatives who have the graphic intensive applications that they're using. Uh, maybe like Photoshop or CAD um, applications, this system would be recommended on that end. 
So again, I know this is quite a bit of, of different options that we have within these families of laptop solutions. And reason why we really want to highlight them is because they're both, they're also unique and they all um, drive for a certain focus group in a certain industry. So if you do have questions or if you're looking to transition into a laptop solution, we can definitely explore more. And along with laptops, we still have our desktops. Desktops have not gone away. They've actually grown quite a bit and we have some really fantastic options as well. And so desktop solutions are still very much so work from home friendly, um, especially if you see now within your role that work from home might be the best fit or you might be working from home uh, permanently or 100% of the time moving forward because it really does work for your business model. So with desktops, this is a more stationary option. And we do have our Vostro line in desktops as well. So within uh, the Vostro desktop line, it is the same idea. It's meant for small business use. So again, if you're looking for something dependable, long, life, uh, long lasting and customizable, the Vostro is going to be your perfect option there. Uh, we also transition into our Optiplex line, and that is a similar to similar comparison to our Latitude laptops, where they are our corporate workhorse desktops. So that's what the Optiplex really represent. And within the Optiplex, as you can see in this exact example, we do have different formats of these desktops. So this is actually an all-in-one system, an all-in-one Optiplex, where the computing system is built right in to the actual monitor itself. So this is really great if you are um, working with collaborative applications and looking to utilize a stylus in different uh, walks of life for your business, uh, things of that nature, the all-in-one system can really be a fantastic option. And if you're deploying these systems to your employees that are now working from home, um, you know, they're not having to worry about multiple boxes to set up or um, multiple different accessories, even though they can be extremely easy. This is a one box setup with your all-in-one system. So it's extremely easy to deploy as well. And then finally, we have our precision desktop. So this again is for um, more of our creatives and our engineers, architects, those who are working with really um, graphic intensive or intense applications in general, the precision is going to be extremely scalable and can really capture the configuration needed to run these programs to be as quick as possible. And um, so within all of these different solutions, and I forgot to mention here, so with our Optiplex, we even have a size option that is about the size of a chapter book. So it can be mounted on the backside of your monitor so again, if you're working with a tight real estate of a desk for your work from home solution, the Optiplex Micro is about the size of that chapter book. So it's a really great option as well for size. But all of our solutions are extremely customizable again, like I've mentioned. So uh, within these desktop solutions, if this is the best option for you and your business, we can find one that, that fits perfectly. And then to really hone in on the full setup, we wanted to focus on the work from home accessories. And this is something that I mentioned earlier in the presentation of, I guarantee one of these solutions can really make all the difference in how uh, the efficiency is running for uh, your different day-to-day -day, uh, needs. So this kind of showcases a full work from home setup. And what's so great about this is this is actually the type of solution that we were working with in office at Dell before I moved into a remote role. We actually all had laptops and docking stations at both work and home. So we could take our work from the office to home, which we're now living in currently. Um, but that was you know, a model that it's looking to transition to um, as we're working back into normal life again. So this is going to be extremely kind of important to, to focus on also if you're looking to have some employees that can be flexible to do both. These types of solutions will be exactly what you're looking for. And so we recommend, you know, if you are working off of a laptop to have external monitors as well. It's been proven that having these um, additional monitors can assist with your productivity and help increase that. I think as mentioned with all of the different applications that we're utilizing, it's so easy to have applications that work off of each other. Um, and so it's, it's great to have multiple monitors to be able to flip back and forth between those applications. So that's highly recommended. And then for the actual docking station, which is going to be the, the solution to make a laptop kind of feel like a desktop setup. So that is the box-like structure to the right side of that monitor. So that's your docking station, which gives you ample amount of ports to plug in these additional monitors or additional devices that you need to use on a daily basis. And so that docking station makes that happen. 
And we also recommend um, working with dedicated headsets and um, webcams. So I'm, you know, surprised already that y'all haven't hear, heard my dogs barking in the background or, you know, maybe kids screaming in the background, construction going on, because of course construction is always going to happen, you know, right whenever you're on a Zoom call or something of that nature. So having the dedicated headset can drown out some of that outside noise and really help, um, you know, make sure that you're speaking as clearly as possible and everyone can hear you on your collaborative platform that you're using. And then also with a webcam as well, it's, uh, as we mentioned, the importance of collaboration and still communicating with your colleagues and your customers and employees. It's important to have this face-to-face uh, moment as well, even though you're not actually in person, just being able to see someone, being able to smile, uh, being able to laugh and see that, um, it really makes a difference. And it really makes a difference when checking in on your employees or your colleagues as well. So we highly recommend laptops a lot of the time also will have these integrated webcams. So that's just as great as a solution. But we also have dedicated webcams as well that you can mount to the top of your monitor and make it a super clean, simple setup um, that each time you join a Zoom call, you're good to go for that video. And then also we have our wireless mouse and keyboard combos, which is just below that monitor. So these are great if you are working off of a laptop and you no longer have that 10 key and you are a number cruncher. It's like the, you know, the bane of your existence that you don't have that 10 key anymore. So it's just these simple, super simple solutions and additions to your everyday um, desk setup that can really you know, bring you back to that office feel. So the wireless mouse and keyboard combos is definitely something we recommend. And then if you look at the the, the hockey puck option that we have is what we always like to call it. It's the DA300. Um, it is a smaller version of our docking station. So if you don't quite need an external monitor or maybe you just need one to make your solution perfect, you can actually utilize this device um, as a port extender. So if you've ever kind of stressed out, oh my gosh, I don't have any USB ports left, this is your saving grace here. <laughs> the, the DA300 can really fill that void of having those uh, ports that you're looking for. And lastly, printing solutions. It's something that is not always thought of, but something that's so central and easily accessed in an office. If you are needing to, to print those out, uh, invoices or whatever needed, um, you know, this is a really great solution. We have a lot of third-party options for printers, um, even spanning from black and white printers, um, print scan, copy, fax, multifunction printers. We have quite a few different solutions there. So, Within all of our laptop solutions, desktop solutions, and now the full view of a full work from home setup, you can see we have really a lot of different versatile um, solutions out there for you as small business owners and startups. So we can definitely customize something fit for you. And then finally, this brings us to um, a real time situation that we're seeing um, right now. So. We are our small business advising team. We're currently working with a business and we did omit that business's name just for you know, confidentiality. But um, sadly, they have lost quite a few of their employees and they have lost quite a bit of their sales. So it's just a, a real life situation that's happening right now that we're seeing. And um, you know, as, as, these, as businesses can struggle, we just wanna show that we do have a level of support that we can you know, be there for you from a technology standpoint to try to keep your business up and running as best as possible. And so in this specific case, um, their server crashed and uh, that was on May 4th. And they immediately needed a replacement. Um, and as mentioned, this can be a very frantic time. So our small business advisors worked with them on the phone for two plus hours and you know hours outside of that to actually put together the full customized solution within the actual, you know, budget or um, you know constraints there and then also time constraints so that server has now been deployed and is up and running and so is the business so it's stories like this that we just want to further showcase that while we do have the hardware solutions we have um, small business advisors that are there ready to help you with any issue that you maybe run into even if it's time sensitive and no matter if you are a business of one person or two people or all the way up to 500 or you know anywhere in between we are there to support for you. And along with all of our hardware solutions, we also have services as well. So if you do not have IT on staff, this can feel like a very vulnerable time. And so we can really act as that IT 
you know, team for you. And so we have 24 seven support next business day on site repair. And so if we need someone to turn around and go out tomorrow to assist with something that's absolutely critical to keep your business up and running, even if it's out of your home, we can make that happen. So we really just want to um, make sure everyone understands and knows that we are here to, to absolutely be a support and an extension and resource for small businesses and entrepreneurs um, across the country. And so this uh, really concludes what we have today as far as our work from home guide. And I'm happy to answer any questions that um, may have come up throughout my presentation. Thanks, Megan. Amazing. So I, I've gotten a question about the VPN again, <laughs> and I think okay. I have similar questions. So tell me, is there a certain maybe size company? Um, so tell me like the difference between having a server, having a VPN, some of these security issues, if you can kind of go back to those and kind of break it down for us. <laughs> sure. This may be new to some people, right? Absolutely. So within these different um, solutions, so we are, like I mentioned, focused on small businesses. So we're looking at one to typically 99 is what we reference as a small business that we're working with. And so uh, whenever we look at transitioning from maybe a few devices that are within your network, so maybe you are a smaller company of either one to three people, um, at that time, you don't necessarily need to take that plunge into a server. Um, the, the purpose for a server is to have a centralized network and kind of like a, a bank in a sense for all of your your data and all of your information and it's um, meant to be something collaborative where if you do have employees that are needing to utilize this information very quickly and securely um, at all times at all different times that's where a server can be very handy because now you have a centralized storage um, and a centralized point where all of your application all of your employees can access these different applications or important company data or information so that's typically whenever we hit a company the size of about four to five, um, it becomes extremely important to now look at those server solutions. And um, with the server solutions, we have sizes for everyone. So um, whenever we do talk about server enterprise, it can be overwhelming because you're thinking, you know, dollar sign, dollar sign, dollar sign. But we have so many different solutions that can be customized for you and grow with you. So you can invest in what's going to make the most sense right now for your business of five employees. And then if you have plans to grow within five, 10 years to five, 10 or 15 employees, employees, your server can grow with you. And so within your server, um, that's where you'll also utilize that VPN and then also a firewall. Um, to not get confusing though, your VPN, you can utilize that as a solo entrepreneur mm -hmm. or a solo um, business owner yourself. So yeah. that can be, you know, a, a solution for just one person. And mm -hmm. that really, like I said, just creates a private network um, from a public internet connection. So it just eliminates the, um, chance for outside hackers or someone who's maybe <clears throat> eavesdropping on what you're doing digitally um, mm -hmm. if you are in a coffee shop. So whenever we do start transitioning back, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. what we might see is, oh, let's go have a coffee date and get some work done yeah. because people are dying to get back in, you know, <laughs> to, to public, of course. And so um, that's really important still to have that VPN. So if you are connected to, let's say, the coffee shop's Wi-Fi and it's not a secure Wi-Fi network and you didn't have to um, log in with a password and now you also don't have a VPN, your, you know, digital footprint is really out there to be taken advantage of at that point. Mm -hmm. hmm. Interesting. Okay, thank you. Of course. Okay, if anyone has any additional questions, you can put them in the chat um, and I'll make sure to relay those to Megan. Oh, oh. oh we're all back. <laughs> okay. I think it looks like 500 employees from Sharon at the Lansing Board of Water and Light was definitely the winner there. Um, that is how many employees are quite a big people. work from home implementation, I'm sure. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, I don't see any other questions coming through, Megan. I'll we'll give everyone a last minute. Um, so, as Megan mentioned, I will follow up with an email to all of you with the um, securities. Um, one pager, is it a one pager that you said you'd share? And some people have asked about VTN options um, as well. So we'll make sure to get back with each of you on those things from Megan. Perfect. And one uh, last quick note um, while I have everyone. 
we, as I mentioned, we have this, the partnership between Accelerate America and Dell. And so you do have a dedicated landing page that you can visit if you do want to get in contact with a small business advisor or um, access, you know, special pricing that you get as a member. And so that's simply dell.com forward slash Accelerate America. And that will take you to all the, the information that you need. Chat for everybody real quick, but we will follow up as well. Okay, I think that's all, Megan. All right, Thank well, you very much. Yeah, absolutely. And if, any, if anyone has any follow up questions, please let me know. I'm happy to assist. Great. Thank you all for attending. Thank you, Megan. Have a great day. Thanks, everyone. Have a good one. Bye. Bye bye.